Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 13.1, Trigonomic Identities, part two. Now in part one of 13.1, you had this basic trig identity, this layout on the first slide. It was a little bit bigger, but these are the same trig identities. They are just a little bit smaller, so I have more room to work with. In part two, we're going to be asked to simplify each expression. When we simplify expressions, ladies and gentlemen, we just want one sine or one cosecant or cosine squared or tangent, right? So we're gonna be working with these guys to make everything just a little bit simpler. So if we look at number one, one of our first goals should be to change everything to one trig function. To change it all in terms of sine, or to change it all in terms of cosine, tangent, whatever it may be. When we first look at one, we see that there is nothing squared. Notice on the left hand side of our identities, there is everything is squared. So we're not going to touch these squares, but what we are going to mess with is these basic trig identities right here. I have two sines, so I'm not going to touch sine. I'm going to leave sines the way it is. But notice what CSC is. Cosecant is 1 over sine. So I'm going to go ahead and change that up a little bit. So I'm not going to touch this sine, so I'm going to leave it sine theta. And now I'm going to touch this cosecant, which turns into 1 over sine. So instead of cosecant, I'm going to put 1 over sine theta. And that's all under the fraction bar, minus sine theta. Now what I'm going to do, just like the distributive property, I'm going to distribute that sine to both of those. So now I'm going to come up with sine theta over sine theta because I multiply it to here. It just sits on top. Then it's going to be minus sine theta from this guy and also another sine theta. Well, let's clean things up a little bit. Here, what does this turn into? Sine over sine turns into one because they cancel each other out. And that's going to be minus, how many sines do we have? Notice how we have a sine and a sine. We do not include those thetas. They are the same angle measure those thetas are. So we're just gonna have it be sine squared theta. Now, do we have one minus sine squared theta? Ladies and gentlemen, if we look right here, because there is a sine squared theta, let's go ahead and bring this down. I'm gonna work with that for right now. I'm gonna have cosine squared plus sine squared theta equals one. Can I make this look like this? Well, what if I subtract that sine squared over? So we have cosine squared equals one minus sine squared theta. As we take a closer look, ladies and gentlemen, this is the exact same thing as this. So what's going to be your answer? This equals cosine squared theta for our simplified expression. All right, I know it looks a little bit complicated at first, but let's stick with it just to get more familiar with it. Number two, now we have sine times cosecant over tangent, or cotangent. Notice again, we have no square, so I'm not going to bother with this junk. I'm going to look over on this side and see what I can turn into what. Well, I have a sine, I'm gonna keep that a sine for right now. Then I have cosecant. Cosecant turns into one over sine, and then cotangent, what will that turn into? One over tangent. Well, let's go ahead and change that cosecant right now. So I'm going to keep sine the same for right now. It's gonna be sine theta. Now I'm going to change that cosecant, and that is going to be one over sine theta. This all goes over cotangent theta. Now let's clean this top up a little bit because I can multiply this through to come up with sine theta over sine theta. I'm going to go over all cotangent theta. 
Now here, what's this turn into? This is just going to turn into one after we cancel out. Now I want this cotangent, I want it in sine, cosine, and tangent. So I'm gonna turn this cotangent into one over tangent. So if we keep going here, we have one over, and now this cotangent theta turns into one over tan theta. Now we have a bottom of a fraction. I'm going to flip and multiply because I'm dividing by it. So I'm going to now multiply the top times tan theta over one. So now if we think about this, this one here is really over one, right? So let's multiply across here and here to come up with tan theta over one or just tangent theta. And that is our simplified answer. So what did we do? We took this cosecant, turned it into one over sine. Now could we have turned this cotangent into one over tangent right away? Absolutely, we would have had to skip this step completely fine, right? So you could have changed it right away, did not know that we had to do that, and so then we kept going with it all the way through. Let's try a couple more. Here with number three, we have tangent squared. Whenever we have a tangent squared, ladies and gentlemen, we can look at our, our trig identities that include a square, or if we look over here with this tangent theta, we can make this a square just as easy, and so it would be sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. So if we would change that tangent squared theta into a sine and cosine, both of these guys would be squared. Now, notice how we have tangent squared times cosecant squared. This is not a cosecant squared minus one yet. So let's go ahead and change this tangent squared theta. What will that give us? That will give us a sine squared theta over a cosine squared theta. What does this cosecant squared turn into? Hmm, well, it will turn into one over sine. So I'm gonna take this guy and turn it into one over sine squared theta, and we still have that minus one. Well, let's clean up that top just a little bit. We'll leave the bottom as is right now. Can we clean up the top as we multiply? Well, if we multiply, we can cancel out kitty corner. So that and that will cancel out, leaving us with one over cosine squared theta, and then we have a minus one, and that will all go over secant squared theta. Now what is one over cosine squared theta? One over cosine squared, that turns into a secant. So I'm going to change this into a secant squared. So keep rocking with it. We have a secant squared theta minus 1. That is all being divided by secant squared theta. Now ladies and gentlemen, I am going to divide this, this, secant squared theta by secant squared theta and that guy over here. So I come up with a secant squared theta divided by secant squared theta. That's going to be then minus one over secant squared theta. Ladies and gentlemen, what does this turn into? This turns into, cancel out, cancel out, just a one, minus. Now, what does this turn into? One over secant turns into one minus cosine, make sure we square that because this is squared, theta. Now, we are very, very close. Notice how we still have a square in there. So we look for cosine squared again. Here's no cosine squared, no cosine squared, but what if we look up here? I'm going to take this guy and play with it a little bit. So if I go 
cosine squared plus sine squared theta equals 1, what's going to happen if I subtract that cosine squared to the other side? It's going to be sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine squared. Notice 1 minus cosine squared I had right there. So this guy is going to turn into just a sine squared theta. So ladies and gentlemen, this whole thing turns into a sine squared theta. Stick with the process and you will be all right. Let's try one more with four. Notice we have secant over sine and then we have one minus cosine squared theta. Well, if we jump up to problem th three, what did this one minus cosine squared theta turn into? That turned into a sine squared. So I'm gonna change this guy right away into a sine squared theta. And now if we watch some magic happen here because we're gonna take that times secant theta over sine theta. Now this is on top ladies and gentlemen, we are multiplying here so we have cancel cancel there's still going to be one sine theta right here so if we multiply across the top we come up with a secant theta times sine theta what does this secant turn into well, if we look over here, secant turns into 1 over cosine. So now we have 1 over cosine theta times sine theta. Keep multiplying. This sine theta stays on top, right? Because it's over 1. This cosine is under 1. So now if we multiply, we're going to move down here. It's going to be sine theta over cosine theta. What does sine over cosine turn into? Well, we're in luck because sine over cosine turns into a tangent. So we have tangent theta, which is our simplified answer. So again, ladies and gentlemen, we are trying to simplify these expressions into tangent, into sine, into cosine, into tangent squared, cosine squared, tangent squared. Stick with the process, give it some effort, give it some time, be patient with it, and you can handle it. I promise you that. But that was section 13.1, Trigonomic Identities Part 2. Good day.